Welcome back to the Campus Ministry Show. I'm Father Logue, chaplain of Lancaster Catholic High School and host of the show. Once again, we're continuing our interviews with Sister Caroline at Maria Wald. So if you're just tuning in for the first time to this episode, check the uh, video playlist, go back and watch our first interviews. Now back to Sister Caroline. Wow. Did you face um, much violence in these l more remote places? Yes. There was a lot of you know, like resistance and talking and inviting people to come to church and you know, it's cultural. Men are always, you know, you don't approach a man and talk to the men like you invite them to church and in church there's no responsibility for them. There's that, they used to say, there's that one man who is in front, they are talking and giving us instructions and I am sitting here with my wife and my children so I'm under that one man, I'm not going to church. You know, that mm. cultural. So you have to break through and bring that understanding of, you are, not, you, are, you, are, you, you are not a king, but the king is Jesus. We hear, we listen to his word, and we all work for Jesus. So until you come to that, it was, that was my other difficulty which I faced, culture. And for me, a girl, a child, talking to men and to people, uh -uh. Mm -hmm. it's not, it's unheard of. But with time, that was evangelization. We won many people, they understood and they came. And that was contributed to my fluence in, elo my eloquence in languages or fluence in languages. So I am grateful for that. And that, those were the experiences. And then the other last experience I experienced was about uh, the war. We had our liberation st struggle and we won our independence in 1980. Mm -hmm. But there was this uh, farm invasion. So I was in another province, in another diocese where there was this time where the farmers, how can I put it, that was a bit painful, where the, where the farms were invaded, taken by the government. Okay. So I had to fight for our mission, because this was our big mission, the first mission in that part of the, the province, and that part of the diocese. Against the government forces? Or? Yes. The war vets, the war veterans, those who fought the independence in war. the independence war, they wanted now to own the land, so they would just invade, they would take any land they wanted. But for missionaries, we are a political, so we just wanted to explain to them that they just can't walk in there. We have a mission, we are here to evangelize. And with their motives, it didn't tally with the mission, you know. I faced a lot of opposition. I was not from that tribe. I was not from that area. So I was also you not know, like sidelined. Mm -hmm. Who is she and why should she tell us we fought the liberation struggle? So I really was in danger. But thanks to the state and the church's relationship, so I had to marry the two and alert the authorities to know that this is going on. The church shouldn't be uh, suffocated by greedy people, mm. full stop. So I won, I mean, not that I won, but that was sanity which came, but the outside world suffered a lot. Mm -hmm. So I had that experience of if, of, of tribalism, of, of corruption, so I had to fight, like bring, I was just in my early 30s at that time, but I don't know where I got the strength to stand up and to defend my community, which was a community of whites and Germans, foreigners we were called, mm. but we are foreigners to bring light, that was my point and we managed. Was there a lot of suspicion because it was so many foreigners in the mission? Not really that, but it was mainly 
ignorance. Mm. Why they are those people? What is their main mission? So which he, that, helped us, that he helped us to evangelize to the people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, those people who wanted to invade our farm, our mission, thanked us to say, we didn't know that this is how you operate. Mm -hmm. So it was like an eye opener for them. Yeah. But it was not an easy, it was not ice cream and cake. <laughs> it wasn't, it was really deadly because people around some of the farmers were brutally killed. Mm. And that was going to happen also to us because one, we didn't come from that area, so good riddance. Right. But God's word and God's purpose cannot just be washed away like wow. that. Up to now, when I think of that, I get goose pimples because it was not easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy. So those were the experiences culture and the, the Christianity, how things can be hard. Would you say that sort of attitude and that experience was common for the Christian missionaries in your country? Or? Yes. Uh, during that, those uh, upheaval days, many missionaries lost their lives. Mm. And I was in one mission also where a missionary was brutally killed and I had to clean the blood on the wall because I was there. I just happened to be transferred to that place a month after that happened. And I knew the guys because that is the school where I went to when I was before I joined. So when I was a missionary, I was a, a professed sister, young sister. I was sent, that was my first mission and when I took my bags going there, that was after the burial of the missionary was killed. Yeah, and I used that office for my pastoral work. So I had to clean first wow. and get it painted and get that bullet on the wall closed. So that's how I closed the chapter and started working. It wasn't easy. Mm. So, Sister, there's a, a story you told once during Kairos about um, having to bring supplies back to the, the mission. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, I remember. Thank you. I used to, 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 to do counseling and guidance in the school. That was also an, an expansion, an extension of my pastoral work. Mm -hmm. So in my pastoral work, if I may put it, mm -hmm. I used to do pastoral work in the parish. Mm -hmm. I did, I was a pastoral sister in the school. I did pastoral work as a chaplain in the hospital. So those were my areas since I've been a nun. Sure. In Africa. So this time I was in the school. In the school where I was, that was Monte Cassino, our first mission in that province. I was in the school and on the mission, mm -hmm. that was 2005 to 2009. And that was the farm invasion, so I had to fight the farm for the mission. And I was the uh, assistant authority, responsible authority of the place. That was a, an era where there was no fuel in the, mission, in the, in the country. Mm. And I had to drive some 42 miles to get the bread for the school. The school has an, had an enrollment of uh, 782 kids, wow. girls only. It was a girls' school. So Young, it, younger girls or? Yes, this is high school. Okay. Getting ready to go for, for college, university. university. So, my superior was uh, an elderly white German sister, and the slogan around that time was, this is no time for whites. Mm -hmm. So I was the assistant and I told her, you better be safe, just remain at home, I will do the groundwork, the running around. So I had to go and collect the bread, they never brought, the, they delivered the bread, so I'd go in a truck 
and we were told 8 a.m. you should be by the, the door. So I would leave after mass and drive to the place to be there and to queue. And there was this corrupt practice, which, I mean, I couldn't swallow, I couldn't stomach it. You come there, you are lined up along the wall. Suppose this is the door, mm -hmm. and you are lined up there. If you come, if you are the first one to come, you'll be the first one. When the door opens, you get your supply. You have to get in line early and, early. and wait. So I used to come, and sometimes, you know, I come, I'll be the first or the second. But the manager would open the door and look at person number 25 and call and say, come. I didn't understand, but I didn't know. These people had paid, mm. bribed to get their bread. I am not going to, I mean, I told myself that was my, my I'm not going to do that because it's not my personal gain. I'm doing it for the kids. Yeah. So, and they, they would tell me, if you don't pay, I would wait until four o'clock and there was no way you could leave the queue and look for food or get whatever, because then- You lose your you place. Lose. And at home, what will I say? Where was I? <laughs> Where had I gone? So I told myself this should stop. I'm not doing it for myself, but this guy's. So when he opened the door, I pushed and I went in and I held him. If you have never been beaten by a nun and a woman, <laughs> I'll be the first one. <laughs> that was my experience. I couldn't help it, so I got it. And uh, so this, uh, these guys were in the bakery. They beat it out. One for respect, you know, if, if your superior is under that situation. They respected the nuns, but they knew their boss was wrong. And I'm doing it for the kids. I'm not doing it for myself. And the fact that I was hungry, a hungry man is an angry man. <laughs> so <laughs> that was, that's how I interpret it today because I didn't plan to do that, but I was angry. In the moment. So I grabbed him and I told him, if you've never been beaten, one by a woman, two by a nun. Today will be the first day. <laughs> he opened his eyes and he was shivering and the rest petered out, so I said, I want my order, we pay in advance and we are supposed to collect our order. And I've been here since morning, no breakfast, no nothing. So I want my order now, here and now. Oh my God, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> and he was a manager, but the, 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 the bakery was owned by a Greek family. And it was an elderly man who was doing the accounts. So one guy went and said, there's a sister who is, who is beating the manager downstairs. <laughs> so the old man came and she said, what is going on? He was in between. This manager was afraid of his boss. This boss was respecting us because we were really a big mission. So we paid Good them. customers. Yeah, for years. And comes this small thing. <laughs> <laughs> and so he came and he stood, and they thought I would shiver. So these other guys came from their ovens, whatever they came from. I don't know where they came from. So they were peeping and looking. And so I told him, say, I always come here. He said, I always see you. I said, I always come here, and this is the practice in case you don't know. We are supposed to pay extra money to give him so that we get our order. But we send in checks. We pay well in advance. I don't get my order. And at times I'm told there was no flour. There was no wheat to make your bread. But the other people are getting and they are going. So I gave my report and my everything to this boss old man. And he looked at me. And the guy was now. On the losing side, I could feel it. I, I sold him out. <laughs> and then the man turned and said, give her the bread and let sister go. So I was given my share and I went. So when I came out, these other guys 
outside this business people with their tax shop when they wanted their bread. So they said, oh, today she got bread early. I said, yes, I got my share. So I loaded. And the other guys, the loading part of it, I mean, I used to have photos. I had to load those trays into the car. You had to pay those guys to load, but they are workers. And these old men didn't know that this is what is going on. Mm -hmm. So you pump out money to, to get your order. And then more to get the And then the, the loaders who are there to pay them, and they put in their pockets. So I said, I'm not doing that. And I don't carry money from home. Why should I be tempted to carry money and to say, no, that's not an easy life I want. So, so I told him all that. So I, then he says, okay, we'll look into that. So, but that corruption, that malice, and that contributed to the tribalism. Mm. You don't belong here, and these church people, they are vocal, you know. The bishops were talking against all this uh, corruption which was going on. So that's how I got it. And on the way, I had to drive, no stopping, because they would ambush me and take the bread and sell there, and the school would be starving. Mm. So what I did was we had parents who were in the government. So I told them when they came for their meetings, this is what I'm experiencing. Your kids are not getting enough and all this, all that. And unfortunately, that guy, when they investigated, they found he had done a lot of corruption. All our bread he was bringing them to tell you, Monte Cassino, there's, you don't have an order today because we ran out of flour. So I'll drive back home and tell their kids. And these were kids from big people. And the kids would say, we are starving. I said, but we are paying school fees. Why are you starving? So I said, okay, this is the situation. So they looked into that and that manager was in trouble. But he committed suicide, sorry, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. No, sin begets sin, mm -hmm. you know. So yeah. he did that and he got himself into trouble. But when it happened, they called me and I got to that upper office and they said, Sister, thank you for this. But we discovered a lot. Many people had suffered, but they didn't come into, into the open. Nobody stood up. Yeah. So I said, well, we are missionaries. We are working for you guys. And when we have a school, you're, you, we are you not know, like, we are local parents. You no, know, like when your kids come to us, we have to take care of them. Yeah. So if I don't speak out, what am I doing? So that was the end of everything. And when I drove around town, I said, sister, sister. <laughs> okay. Nobody wanted to cross you then. Yeah, they, you know, they, they, they painted me, they gave me a, a, another name which I, I, I didn't like because they put me up here to say, she's a fighter, she is, don't temper with it. Because I talked to the guys, the governor of the place who also came, and the parents, they were in the, somewhere in the army, somewhere there, so they did all that. Mm -hmm. So they said, if you experience anything like that, just here's my, my number. And when I was going to get bread, I told them the dates, and the, the police would be on would the be watch, ready. on the lookout. So that's, I was a small queen. <laughs> 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 well earned. Yeah, but no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What they did to Jesus, they wanted to make him the king because... So, but he slipped away. I couldn't sleep away, but I, <laughs> I just said, okay, let it be. I survived, yeah. but it was not easy. Thanks so much for tuning in for this interview. Keep checking back for further installments of our interviews here at Maria Wald. God bless. Mm -hmm.